Fantastic. Thanks again. So again, um, really, th you know, really thanks for setting this up. It's a great forum to really be able to talk about security. It seems like security is on the forefront of everyone's mind. I know when I talk with a lot of customers, security is almost one of the topics that always comes to the forefront of every conversation. Um, again, this is going to be a talk about security hub. We are going to dive into some technical aspects of it. It's really a lot of content uh, and really a lot to cover in about 30 minutes. So I'm really going to try to make sure I hit in on the most important aspects of it. Um, you can reach out to me through email if you want to have a further deep dive. There's a lot of uh, talks that we have done at reInvent on Security Hub when it was released last year. Um, with that being said, I'll just go and move right along. Again, I'm Steve Woodard, a solution architect in AWS. Um, I've been in IT for a little over 20 years. Been in Amazon roughly about two years now. Uh, before that, I came from a consulting partner. Before that, I was actually a customer um, embracing AWS services. So just a little bit of background on me. You always reach out to me on my LinkedIn page or hit me up through my Amazon email. So we're going to really talk about uh, Security Hub. The main focus here is going to be security. So we're going to go ahead and keep it really, really on topic. Uh, and the way AWS looks at security, and I'm just going to go through a security services overview and kind of how we look at it. Now, please don't let this slide intimidate you. There's going to be a lot of things on here. I call this the eye chart. I just want you to get a sense of how AWS is very security focused and how we base our security uh, alongside with the NIST framework. So a couple of things here to keep in mind are important aspects when we're talking about security. The one main problem that we've always had when we're dealing with a lot of on-prem resources is a lot of different types of monitoring tools, a lot of seam tools, whether that's Trend Micro, that could be Sumo Logic, that could be Splunk, that could be um, you know New Relic. There are tons and tons of products out there for you to get insight into your environment. What we wanna do is we really wanna to try to level the landscape and simplify visibility with protective and reactive services. Now I'm gonna walk you through this here real quick. So if we look at it from identification perspective, the most important thing is to identify those key assets and resources. In an organization, it's, it's really important to understand how they are gonna be deployed. Uh, you can't really protect those resources until you know exactly what you have. And the most important thing after that would be is to protect those resources. So you've heard time and time again, especially on these talks, the last couple, you know, couple of sessions, is native tools such as identity access management, KMS, um, Cloud HSM. There are a wealth of tools that are native to AWS that allow you to protect those services, give you that fine grained encryption, uh, whether that's embed your own keys, bring your own keys, um, and, a, and a list of other services. Another thing we want to look at is being able to also detect. So services such as Guard Duty, which is actually was launched about a year or so ago, it's one of our fastest growing security services that are being adopted by customers today because it has that built-in machine learning into it. So it can look at anomalies and look at un unusual behavior in your environment. And really rounding this out is not only being able to detect what's happening, but also being able to respond to things that are actually happening. And a great way to do that is being able to leverage a tool like Lambda. And Lambda is a great way that you can automate and respond to security events. And a lot of times what happens is that in security is things are happening so fast is that it's almost so fast, it's too fast for a human to try to interact with them. So you want them to be as aut autonomous as possible. Uh, and thirdly, of course, is that you want to look at, detect, respond to those events. You wanna be able to make sure that you can also at the same time recover from any type of events, such as you want to be able to recover. So let's say you wanted to quickly rebuild a network that's been compromised. So you could leverage tools like CloudFormation or OpsWorks, which is built on Chef and Puppet. And then you want to be able to recover not just the data, but you want to be able to recover the entire infrastructure and the apps on top of that extremely fast. So this really gives you a, a really quick way to be able to use these embedded tools to give you that ability from all ends of the spectrum from identification all the way to detect and respond. And we'll definitely dive into a lot of these um, in the next couple of slides, but I just wanna lay the, found, the, the groundwork here. Um, where Security Hub comes into play is, Security Hub was launched, uh, I think it was June 24th of last year. And really what Security Hub is, is a way for you to get a comprehensive view at, on your high priority um, security alerts and exactly what that security posture is across all of your AWS accounts. 
Um, and a lot of customers, they start to embrace a multi-account strategy where they have multiple accounts, multiple different types of entities. Um, you want to be able to have visibility into that that gives you the ability to start looking at things such as what is our firewall posture? How are endpoints protected? What is the vulnerability and compliance standpoint look like? And oftentimes uh, without these tools is that it really leaves your team switching kind of back and forth uh, between different tools to deal with hundreds and sometimes thousands of security alerts every single day, uh, which can of course sometimes in a sense overwhelm most traditional, even large enterprise security teams. And really Security Hub gives you that ability to now really have a single pane of glass that aggregates, organizes, and prioritizes all of those security alerts and findings from multiple services. So as your adoption grows into the cloud, you start to adopt more services, Guard Duty, Macy, Inspector, Firewall Manager, uh, you start to think, all right, these are all great tools, but how can I really bring them in to have a single pane of glass perspective that gives me visibility and it gives me a way to start building in some sort of continuous monitoring in the environment, look for things such as automated security checks, and I want to basically base them on them of the AWS best practices and industry standards that any organization can follow. And that's the most important thing is that it uses industry standard and, and, and basically um, industry best practices, and industry standards uh, that applies that. And we'll dive into that a little bit deeper. But also what you could do is tie them in with things such as Amazon Detective and use that in conjunction with CloudWatch events uh, to be able to send those findings even to a ticketing system, a chat, or even your typical security information event management or SIEM, uh, or you could even use this as a security orchestration automation and response or SOAR, uh, even in any type of incident management tools, or even if in fact, if you have custom remediation playbooks in place. So a couple problem statements we wanna look at is most organizations really kind of struggle with this one main thing here, which is compliance. Um, and they have a backlog of compliance requir requirements. Uh, the question comes in is, are we compliant? Uh, am I compliant? Am I secure? Uh, Security Hub really gives you the chance to focus in on those offerings that is really enabled uh, to be able to look at those resources and aggregate those findings across multiple customer accounts. When we look at things such as there are too many security alerts, there's dozens of security tools that we have currently in place. And that's the problem that we have in most organizations is there are a dozen, dozen different types of tools. Security Hub allows you to manage security compliance from one central location. And then that also really reduces the time spent wrangling data from different locations uh, within the AWS management console. So it really simplifies things to be able to give you that single pane of glass. Uh, third is that we look at it to say there's too many security alerts, just the uh, sheer amount of volume that are, is coming in for most organizations. Again, if you have one or two people or even a team of InfoSec people uh, looking at large amounts of data, things are happening so fast that a human cannot process the massive amounts of information coming in. So you need to be able to kind of prioritize those alerts and understand what is a, a high priority. And um, that ability to kind of give you that insight into it is very, very powerful. And fourth is a lack of integrated view across different types of security and compliance accounts. Um, in addition to default, you know, we also have a tool uh, that allows you to have default insights that are built in, and you can also tie that in with AWS and even AWS partners. And you could even create your own insights and track those issues uh, that are unique to that specific environment. Uh, and and these, these benefits really, um, provide you with a certain level of customization, if you will, that can really come in handy when you're dealing with real, real, really difficult and complex uh, security requirements and regulations. So those are the four prop statements that we looked at across the industry. And that's where we basically kind of we were able to hear from our customers. And that's really what led to the integration of Security Hub. Um, and really Security Hub is really great for a multi-account strategy. It really can start to span out across multiple accounts that gives the single pane of glass. If you look at being able to try to normalize or parse data through different types of security finding formats, uh, we do have 28 partner integrations that really can set up within CloudFormation. Uh, you can integrate those with uh, custom automation scripts. You can integrate those with 25 plus out of the box uh, AWS or stacking rules called insights. So if we look at this from a full spectrum, the ability for Security Hub uh, to be able to look at that data, 
also to look at and aggregate and prioritize those findings. Now this is kind of similar to what I was talking about before, but being able to do this in an organization uh, is very, very powerful. Um, be able to conduct automated compliance scans. And then lastly, of course, is being able to take action based on those findings. It's great if you're collecting information, but the most powerful, uh, the most powerful tool you have is being able to take action based on those findings. And if you could do that in an automated way that can remediate those, uh, that's even a next step up above. The end, end goal here is really is to increase your uh, visibility into the security issues and it's easier to stay in compliance. So if we kind of had this full spectrum of things, that would really be the sweet spot um, and really gives the customers the chance to accelerate. And as they accelerate, uh, they can then start to look at security as a service and deeper and even deeper uh, that security posture. So we'll look at a couple different ways on kind of how the security hub workflow really works. Um, really being able to get it set up is we really want to start look at first things is, is look at and let security hub basically detect. We can also tie this in with partner solutions. Uh, I'll touch on partner solutions in a little bit later here. Um, but then we also want to be able to use security hub to aggregate and ingest uh, and what we call findings and insights. And I'll touch on a little bit more about what that means. So here it is that we're detecting normal behavior. We're basically taking that, we're aggregating that against industry or basically industry uh, best practices. And then we then want to say, all right, so what are we going to do with this? So let's just say we want to fire this off to uh, CloudWatch notifications. Uh, so now we want to be able to report on this. Great, so now we take a finding, we can then tie that to a CloudWatch events rule, and that CloudWatch events rule can then say, all right, so what do you want me to do? I now can take action on that uh, based on the list of targets that are available, inherently available within CloudWatch. So that could be a Lambda function, fired off to a Kinesis stream, fired off to an SNS, send me a note and email notification, uh, launch it, uh, uh, something throughout my uh, CICD pipeline, whether, whatever that means to you, uh, you can now target that and take action based on a wide number of target options that are inherently available within the console. So one of the exciting things about Security Hub is the ability to have that integration with many trusted vendors and partners um, in the scene space that many customers already know and they have been using for many, many years. And the great thing about it is that Security Hub already easily integrates with these products. And uh, it also uh, integrates in conjunction with CloudWatch and gives you tighter integration with those native scene tools. And the big benefit here is the uh, visibility of the ability to take action and to remediate those findings. So if you look here at the screen, you see a lot of companies are very familiar with Checkpoint, F5, uh, Barracuda, Palo Alto. So again, is that the list of being able to integrate with these partner selections is, is, is very, very large. So if we were to tie all this together, and then we were to say, all right, so I'm gonna take all this data, ingest it in the uh, security hub, and then what am I gonna do? I can now also integrate that again with other third party or the third partner solutions that I'm currently using today. Splunk, Sumo Lab, Loop Logic, Rapid7, ServiceNow. So again, is that I can already take it from data ingestion all the way out to taking action. So the ability to kind of have an end to end spectrum of security really opens it up now. So what are the benefits? If we look at what are some benefits, we talk about compliance, aggregated findings, the question of am I compliant, am I secure comes up. Um, you know, we have, we have an environment, we wanted to make sure that of course it can be secure, whether that's a publicly facing uh, type of application, whether that's something that basically holds PII or PHI or whatever the application is, uh, we wanna make sure that it is compliant and making sure that it's compliant, we wanna make sure that of course it passes the security tests. Uh, we'll talk about aggregated findings and then really the ability to take action. So the three prong approach of being able to be secure at looking at findings and then be able to take action. So let's take a look at this, some of the compliance examples here. So some compliance examples are things like, let's make sure that we're not using the root account. Uh, we don't want to use the root account in our environment. We want to make sure that we are setting a standard to make sure that we're looking for this type of behavior. And if in fact, if we do, we want to make sure that we stop it. We want to ensure that CloudTrail is enabled for all regions, for all accounts. So as your organization grows and you start to take on more and more accounts, and as you start to scroll, uh, grow out your AWS footprint, you look at all of the services you now could consume across regions. We want to make sure that at the most, all API calls are going to be tracked, and you can do this by enabling and making sure that in CloudTrail is enabled across all regions, across all your accounts. Uh, making sure that you just don't have port 22 open to the world, 
uh, and ensure that your IAM policies follow that, basically that uh, administrative privileges are not created. So you wanna make sure that you are um, kind of protecting against uh, rogue or misconformed policies. And we wanna make sure that we're measuring this against 43 pre-configured rules from CIS. Um, so again, is that we're using CIS hardening benchmark rules to ensure that our environments are compliant and they're basically up to standards. So we'll look at some aggregated findings here. Uh, and what is a finding? Uh, a finding is simply uh, a potential security issue. And Security Hub, what it's gonna do is it's gonna look at and it's gonna aggregate and normalize and then prioritize the security alerts and findings. Um, so whether that's either from AWS or whether that's from third party services, um, it's, it's really all about really generating its, it's generating its own findings in result of running continuous and automated configuration checks um, in the background. And then really a finding ingestion event is when a new finding is ingested into Security Hub uh, or when a finding update is ingested into Security Hub from a different type of third party pr product here. So if we look at usual behaviors, unusual behaviors, it really starts to give us a sense of kind of where this data is coming from, what type of effect is it's gonna have, what's unusual. So it really gives us a chance to really start to ingest that data. One way to look at it is if we look in the console Looking at it from a security hub perspective. All right, so let's take a look at some of these findings. And what am I looking at here? So the first one here is going to basically be detected by guard duty. Guard duty is going to say, I've got some unusual console login that was seen for a principal um, principal account. It's going to give us it's going to give us the resource ID and it's going to tell us that resource type. So here I've got a full visibility into all of the incidences that security help is finding across different services, across different accounts, that gives me the ability to basically prioritize based on high, medium, or low severity. And this is great visibility, but what ultimately what I wanna to drive to is I wanna to drive to being able to automate or remediate some of these findings, so that way, if it were to detect action, I could shut that account down. If it's a, you know, basically an EC2 instance that's been basically compromised, that's doing some Bitcoin mining, I wanna be able to shut that EC2 instance down. Whichever your scenario may be, um, this is a great way for you to um, be able to tie in exactly how you want to remediate this, how you want to report on this, but this is a way for you to see aggregated findings with Inside Security Hub. Now, we also have Insights as well, and Insights is simply just, the, again, it's a collection of related findings, and really Security Hub, what it does is it really, you know, offers those managed insights and it uses filters that you can uh, further tailor to your own specific unique environment. Um, so, for example, insights really can help identify EC2 instances um, that are missing security patches and, you know, whether they be uh, important uh, vulnerabilities or it could be things like S3 buckets with public read or write permissions. Um, you can even build in basically managed um, custom rules with Inside Security Hub that allow you to track security issues across your environment. So again, this is very, very powerful when we start looking at, uh, you know, detail of account, uh, basically vulnerabilities, remediation, and things like that. So we talk about um, kind of some examples when we talk about security of insights. Again, it's a dashboard. It, it's not just a dashboard tool, but it's also really uh, powerful that customers can create their own insights. So let's take a look at an example here is that EC2 instances might have a security patch missing, which is very, very common. Um, you wanna make sure that you can remediate that. S3 with uh, stored bucket credentials, you wanna make sure you can remediate that. Uh, S3 buckets with read and write permissions. Um, so, or you can even find top AMI's account by findings here is that really the AWS has defined specific evaluation checks that align to the controls within a certain compliance standard. So for example, CIS or Center for Internet Security, um, for whether it's be uh, AWS Foundation Benchmark, you know, ultimately the Security Hub really creates a score to inform you how your environment's doing against specifically the CIS benchmark and it displays that information on your main dashboard. So when you click through, um, you know, really can, you can see a summary of the controls and the, basically what you need to be paying attention to. Um, and it also really helps you um, show informational information about best practices on how to remediate uh, each compliance issue. So it really kind of walks you through, all right, so I've got, a, I've got an issue, how to remediate that. So Security Hub is going to provide you with a recommended best practice approach to that. So we'll look at some taking action here. So again, we're talking about being able to automate security to take action. 
So if I were to think about it this way is it's great to report on this, but I also want Security Hub to also remediate things. So that could be, I want to integrate this with CloudWatch. And then from CloudWatch, I want to be able to say, I want to be able to fire off an AWS Lambda function, or I can even fire this off to a partner solution that allows me to remediate whichever finding that is. And the great thing about this is that the benefit that it provides you is the certain level of customization that essentially can come handy when dealing with a company requirement or specific regulatory requirement. So custom actions here, again, we take a look at some custom actions. We'll take a look here. So a great example of this is great. So you found a security alert, what can I do with this? Well, you can send an email off uh, and you can notify maybe your security team, could be your management team, could be your operations team, uh, whoever would definitely be there to just make sure that they are notified of certain events that may be happening in your environment and what that action might be. So we basically are creating a notification in conjunction with the CloudWatch events rule that says, all right, so if we have a high security event finding, we want to make sure that we tie this out to um, a CloudWatch event. So that way the CloudWatch event can then go through and then start to send an email out. So that way we know, hey, there's a security vulnerability that was found. We know exactly what's happening. And then we know what that action is going to be to remediate that. So we'll look at a couple different custom actions within Security Hub. Uh, it's not just limited to sending emails. Uh, what you can really do with this is you really can get dynamic with this. Uh, and we see a lot of customers innovating around different things they can do. So very three very common type of uh, custom actions within Security Hub are going to be things such as a custom action that then defines what the event is with a CloudWatch rule, fire off a Lambda function. So I can now actually respond to these events using uh, basically, um, basically serverless code that allows me to then remediate that specific uh, so security vulnerability. Maybe I want to ingest that into a Kinesis stream and then I can then take that and ingest that and start to view in real time what are some other things happening across different types of environments or different types of accounts. Another option is that when you're looking at a custom action, you can then fire off an SNS notification and then you can even use this in conjunction with a systems manager to initiate a run command or you can then start to build in automation scripts to start saying, all right, so if I have a rule that defines a specific action, I can then start to then use run command that will then be able to leverage automation scripts to be able to shut certain things down, be able to put things in place, whichever. Again, the great thing about this is that it's accustomed to your specific environment and you can get it dynamic as you need to be here. Again, a couple of different types of uh, custom actions here. We start to see, as you saw from the previous example was, we can send an email, we can isolate the instance, we can terminate that instance. Uh, we can even send the notification out to Slack, send security teams, uh, security teams uh, or we can even disable access keys. These are just a few custom actions that you can configure within Security Hub. Uh, again, there's a wide variety of lists of things you can do within Security Hub that can make it very custom to your environment. Um, so again, don't think it's just limited to these, but these are some of the most common that we see customers being able to implement uh, in their environment. And this is really where we start to, start to see them getting more and more accustomed to some of the tools with Inside Security Hub. So again, I talked about taking action. We talked about being able to integrate these out with partner solutions. Uh, let's take a look at a couple different partner solutions here. Um, again, is that we can then start to leverage this um, and be able to use this as a way for us to ingest data into different partner solutions. We can even pull that data in from different solutions, whether that be on-prem into different environments, different accounts, and just under the security hub. And again, you can fire this out to a list of target options, whether it be a Lambda function, Kinesis, SNS, DynamoDB. Again, is that there's, the options are limitless here. So if we look at something that tends to be very common, uh, if we want to say, all right, so I want to look at all findings, automatically send them to CloudWatch events. So that way I can log those and be able to look at that. Security Hub is then going to take that information and just it at the console. And then I can then use CloudWatch and then fire off an, basically a CloudWatch rule that then says, if in fact, if this parameter meets this specification or this rule, I want to be able to look for a certain finding associated with, let's just say a custom action ID and then be able to then respond on that. And that response could be a Lambda function or it could be step functions where it can then build in its own workflow orchestration and then be able to then respond and be able to remediate based on that workflow logic. And if in fact, if you need to, you may be able to tie it in or you might tie, want to tie it into a webhook within Slack, be able to leverage that with Ops Center. Again, is that you could be able to use this 
uh, to be able to use the targets to things like chat, ticketing, on-call management, run custom playbooks, remediation, and that's where the power of ops works and system manager comes into play because then you can then remediate those actions. So here's an example of how you'd build out a CloudWatch rule. Uh, so in fact, if you just go to the console, you can then create your rule, and then you can then basically then start to specify your code in JSON, and then you can add in your target to basically what it is that you want to uh, respond in events to, uh, and then you could tie this in with CloudWatch events. Really quick, service availability. Uh, is this available in my area or my region? If you look here across our region map, you start to see that it is available uh, majority of reasons. The most coming soon regions are gonna be basically things like Bahrain and Milan. But if you're operating out of the majority of the most common regions, it's definitely available today. So pricing, so how much does all this cost? Well, you can initiate a free trial with all accounts. You have a 30 day trial period. Uh, and then of course, then you can start looking at what am I gonna do past 30 days? Uh, if I were to say, I'm gonna run this across all my entire environments, the first 10,000 events per month are gonna be free. And then every 10,000 events thereafter is you see the price here, which is gonna be less than three cents per finding. Um, and then of course, then you start to have compliance standards. First 100,000 is gonna be less than 10,000 a check. Uh, and then you, as you start to get up to over half a million, uh, you still see the price here. It's basically at a fraction of a penny. So again, it's gonna be based upon the compliance check per account, per region, per month. So definitely something to keep into account, but really just overall is that those finding adjustments are about three cents per 10,000 findings. So it's very, very inexpensive to be able to leverage Security Hub in your current environment. Um, you know, examples are things like ensure that you don't have any root access uh, or basically you wanna make sure you wanna ensure uh, MFA multi-factor authentication is enabled for all IAM users. Ensure you have S3 bucket cloud trail is not basically publicly accessible. Um, there's just a many list of things you can do with Security Hub. But really, you know, that Security Hub at a very high level, I know I went through a lot of information uh, very, very quickly. Um, we do have a Security Hub deep dive immersion day that you can definitely participate in. If you wanna get more hands-on with the tool, definitely reach out to your AWS solution architect. Uh, we definitely have quite a bit of things out there already. Again, we've done many, many reInvent talks where we've went in detail. We've actually shared some customer success stories, but definitely encourage you to go check out Security Hub from the AWS website and get a little bit more deeper with the tool.